Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome back to the LibGDX Kotlin RPG tutorial series. So this part is an intermediate part between part 6 and 7 if I remember correctly. And it actually gets recorded after part 7 was uh, recorded. Um, and I want to yeah, mention a few things that I found out now since those two parts. So first of all, in part six, we are introducing the tiled map stuff and yeah, we created our first map and I mentioned a little bit the struggle that I always have with making the tiles work properly and about the texture bleeding issue. I'm talking about that a little bit. And I had a look then afterwards uh, in the internet if there is a solution available, maybe an, an easier approach than the way I'm doing it. And actually, no surprise, there is something available which I found on GitHub, which is this tile extruder. I will link that in the video description below again. And this actually does exactly what I want. So it simply does, you can see it here on the left side, you have the texture bleeding issue with the lines. And on the right side, you have the see the same scene, same tile set, but uh, without the texture bleeding issue. And the way the tool is solving is, is like I explained it in the in part six. So those are, for example, the original tiles. And after the extrusion, you get some extra pixels between your tiles uh, where the edge pixels or the outer pixel is simply duplicated again and again so that you have then some gap in between the tiles and that actually helps a lot and also has the benefit that the, the different tiles of the tile set itself do not uh, lose their ordering so if you remember from part six, so I had a, a random amount of tiles there and it is a struggle then to find the different bits and pieces to, for example, make an entire tree again. And now with the new approach that I show in a moment, I simply have the tree again completely available in this tile set um, and there I don't need to find the different yeah, tiles which belong together. Also, for example, the cliffs or the planes, I think it was mentioned or, or called in the original asset pack, also the fences. So all of that is then in the correct order. And it's then way easier to draw the map again and also much more fun because it's then faster. And how does it work? So it's explained on the website. What you need is the so-called node package manager. If you have never heard of that, you automatically have that normally when you install uh, IntelliJ, at least the ultimate version. If you don't have that, then simply download uh, Node.js. Let me check. I think there should also be an official website for that. Yeah, exactly that one and then pick the latest stable version and with that you get uh, the node package manager which is very similar to what we learned in libgdx with the gradle setup so it's the build tool i would say for javascript projects or typescript projects so that's very similar to gradle or maven if you heard of that on the javascript or typescript side you have this node package manager or as an alternative also that you have heard that there would be also yarn i think it's pronounced like that but anyway when you have this node package manager then you can install this tile extruder uh, i read somewhere that it's also working without the installation with this npx there i'm not 100 percent sure what it is i did not look that up so i simply use the npm install command and then uh, i run the command like below i, I tried it with this npx stuff uh, and it's working and how does it work so let's have a look at our uh, original tile set that we downloaded so the mystic puts tile set and there for example we have a fence graphic so let, let's take this one here so there you see it's 64 by 64. And now what we want to do to uh, avoid the texture bleeding, we want to introduce this separate pixels in between a specific tile. And then once you have this tile extruder installed, I've prepared it here already. Then you simply run, for example, npx tile extruder, then the tile width and tile height. In our case, it's a 16 by 16 graphic. Then how many pixels should be used? So how many additional pixels will be added around each tile. So for example, six, which would mean between tiles, we have a gap of 12 and from a tile to an edge of the texture, it will be then the six. And as an input, for example, we can take the fences graphic if I'm in the correct folder. Yes, I am in the correct folder and the output file 
is for example fancy's extruded PNG and then you simply run that. It does then a couple of things, but it's very fast. And what you then get is uh, a new graphic. So this one here, uh, that one is bigger, of course, and you already see it here a little bit. So there are these additional pixels now uh, in between. And then when you have all those graphics extruded, so I did that, for example, for the decoration, the fences, the grass, the objects uh, and the planes. And then we can simply go back to our texture packer. Uh, they are updated now the, the map thing, so the, the map pack. And now we don't want any padding, we don't want duplicate padding, no bleeding, no nothing, because our original graphics already have that because of the tile extruder that we use. So we simply combine the graphics together. So here you see I have the fences graphic in it, I have the planes, I have the objects, I have this grass tile here, and also this decoration. And then when we use it in tiled, uh, we simply need to specify it correctly. So because we used an extrusion of six here, for example, you can try other values, but I used here six. Then when you create a new tile set, you simply use the number. So the extrusion for me was six. That's the distance between the edge and the, the tile. And then the distance between two tiles in, is then two times that value. So in that case, 12. And when I use that, then Again, we get the original graphics out of it and we can then simply draw with it. And the benefit now is that we uh, don't lose the order of the tiles and we simply have the objects and everything still together, which makes it way easier to draw something. And I also created now a new map, as you see it here, which is a little bit more fancier than the original map that we had. And just that you see it. There is now something in addition which comes in part 7 if you haven't seen that yet. But uh, as you see, so the map is still loading correctly and rendered correctly. So everything is still working. So here I just wanted to mention this tile extruder yeah, library or whatever that, that is called, which helps with that. So this is the approach that I will use. And I will also mention this in the GitHub project in the credits below of the README. That, uh, yeah, that I also there will mention this link. I did not use it for the GitHub map and for the GitHub project, but for sure I will use it for newer projects because that really helps a lot and yeah, takes a lot less time than my approach. Okay, and then one thing that I want to mention for the upcoming part, so part seven. First of all, I should not record any parts after eight o'clock because my brain really it did, not <laughs> it did not work anymore. I could not even do simple math because, uh, for example, the, the player graphic has a size of 48 by 48 and we had to divide it by 16. And I think one time in the video I mentioned that is 1.5, then another in another video, uh, in another part of the video, I say it's 2.5, uh, and of course it's simply three. So 16, then you have 32, and then you have 48. So it would be quite simple, but for whatever reason, I could not do that math. And also, um, we are going to develop in this part seven an entity spawn system that you see already here, and which is simply creating the entities out of an object layer in tiled. So you learn that in the next part. And there I show an approach and mention that you can do it a little bit differently because the, the way it is working, to, to put it really simple and quickly, out of the map, so when the map gets loaded, I create simple uh, entities uh, which are intermediate entities and they simply have like a, a type component which mentions this type here in tile. So for example, the player type entity with the location of this object and a slime type entity with the location of this slime. And those are just intermediate entities. So they just contain this information. And then out of these intermediate entities, I create real entities. So a real player with the correct graphic, later on with the correct movement, attack damage, life, whatever. So all the properties which are bound to that specific type here. 
And I mentioned that you could do that differently, which of course you can, but I forgot uh, the benefit why I did it that way. And the reason was that initially with this uh, game, I also wanted to introduce some spell casting. So not only the attack animation with the sword, I also wanted to do some spell casting like a lightning bolt and maybe that you can summon something. Uh, but in the end, I did not go for that because I did not have a lot of time left anymore and I wanted to start with the tutorial series but if I would have introduced that then the approach actually that I present to you in part 7 with this uh, entity spawn system and this intermediate entity does then have the benefit that for example if a spell or whatever uh, would spawn additional entities then you can simply spawn this intermediate entity and the entity spawn system itself takes then care of creating the real entity so with the graphic life uh, damage whatever so with all these settings and i forgot about this benefit and did not mention that so that's why i wanted to mention it here it makes more sense when you have then or when you watch then part seven then you know what i'm talking about um, and then one last thing that I wasn't aware of, which is also in part seven, but it actually makes sense. So when we create and when I introduce then the objects layer, then we are going to introduce a new tile set. So here it's called entities and it contains, it's a collection of images as you see it here. And the way I created that in part seven is that, uh, let me quickly show you that. So when you update a collection of images tile set, then you can add images to, to this tile set. And there I simply picked random graphics from the, for example, assets raw folder, um, I think game and then player, and then for example, the player idle animation. And the way tiled is storing that is that it stores the relative path of that images that I'm adding here. So from our projects root folder, which would be uh, in my case, this Mystic Woods YouTube from that, I think from the, maybe from the assets folder, but maybe also from the root folder, not 100% certain. Uh, it, yeah, it simply adds the relative path to the tiled map. So it will go to assets raw, then game, then player, for example, and then to idle zero. And when you load the map, so the tiled map in libgdx, then it also will load all these images that you add to the collection of images, which uh, tile set, which makes sense because of course, if you maybe want to render something special, then you also need the resource for that. So it of course has to load those images. Uh, for me, I, I was not aware of that. I noticed that in part seven by accident and I tried then out also the GitHub project and what I did is that from the original project, so this Mystic Woods project, I deleted the assets raw folder as you see it here, so it's not existing anymore. And not a surprise, it could then not load the map anymore because of course, if those files are not existent anymore or existing anymore, then of course it can also not load the map. So that's why I want to suggest that when you do something like that, so when you have a tile set with images, then please use images from your assets folder. And the way I did it now, so in the assets folder, there's a map folder. Um, sorry, where is it? Ah, I did that, I only fixed that in the original project. I need to do that here as well. So there in the maps folder, I added, for example, images. And there I placed in all the images that I need to set up the objects of my map. So for example, from the chest, it is the idle animation from the player and from the slime. So it will be those images here. And the important part is that you put that into your assets folder, because when you uh, bundle, for example, your game and deploy it to Android or also, for example, on desktop or whatever, then the assets folder is part of your game and the map can still be loaded. But if you have an image which is outside of the assets folder, then um, of course the game will not be able to load it because it's not bundled in the char file or whatever comes out of that. So that's why I suggest that you always, when you use those uh, collection of images tile sets, that you place those images in your assets folder of the game. And I did it here. So again, under maps and images, I need to fix that up in our project that we have in the tutorial series. But yeah, this is important to keep in, in mind. 
Again, in part 7, I noticed this problem and I fixed it quickly, but also not in the correct way because I still use the assets raw uh, images and we will move that to the assets folder itself. Good, so that's it. I just wanted to mention those few things. So that's not a, a separate part. Um, now I'm going to record the next part. So the box to the stuff and everything. Okay, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.